Let's begin our worship with the watchword for the week for the first Sunday in Advent. It comes from Mark 13, verse 26. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Greetings and welcome on this first Sunday of Advent as we gather for worship as members and friends of the Moravian congregations of Fries Valley, Janaton, Hutton, and Eurexville on this first Sunday of the season of Advent. I'm Pastor Dave Geyer, and it's my pleasure to welcome you in a service that, to be honest with you, may seem a bit thrown together. Uh, it, it, it has, in fact, been put together at rather short notice following the decisions of each of our joint boards to suspend in-person worship in light of the worsening uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Please note that that, extent, that suspension also extends to Christmas Eve services. There will be no in-person Christmas Eve services in our sanctuaries this year. It's a very difficult and painful decision, but one made out of concern for our members and friends and those most vulnerable. Now, we will do everything we can to provide, continue to provide online services for those who have this ability, and we will also mail worship materials for anyone who does not have online access and request that from our church office. Now, if you are on our email list, you should have received a bulletin by email last night, and hopefully there's also a copy of that attached to the comments uh, below this YouTube video. I would refer you to that. It's got a number of announcements. I will not elaborate on those now, but please do uh, make sure to review those. But for now, without further ado, let, us let our worship continue on this first Sunday of Advent with the lighting of the first candle of our Advent wreath. Today is the first Sunday in the season of Advent. Advent means coming, and in this season, we are preparing for the coming of Christ. The Advent wreath contains many symbols. The wreath is made of evergreen branches, a sign of new life, and a reminder to us of the new life offered to us through Jesus the one whose coming we await. Each candle symbolizes a special prom promise offered to us through the birth of the Christ child. First hope, then peace, then joy, and then love. And the candle in the center is the Christ candle, which we will light on Christmas Eve to symbolize the birth of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Today we light the first candle, the candle of hope. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted our lives in so many ways, but it cannot stop the coming of Christmas. It cannot stop the coming of Jesus. The candle of hope reminds us of the ancient hope of the people Israel for the birth of the Messiah, a hope that was fulfilled in the birth of baby Jesus. It expresses our hope that our Savior would be at work today to bring help to this hurting world. And it speaks to our hopeful anticipation of the approaching day when Jesus will come again. May this Advent season be a season of hope for all of us, a hope founded in the sure promise of Christ. Amen.
Please join us in the liturgy for Advent. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, all the earth. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Rejoice greatly. Shout for joy. See, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. We praise you, the Lord God of Israel. You came to the help of your people and have set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty savior, a descendant of your servant David. You promised through your holy prophets long ago that you would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those who hate us. You have shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and have remembered your holy covenant. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, you promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve you without fear. So that we might be holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. By your tender mercy, you caused the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The voice of the messenger echoes from the desert, calling us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make a straight path on which he may come. Let us confess our sins so that our crooked ways will be made straight and the rough ways smooth. Let us pray. Gracious Lord Jesus, you come to us with the good news of salvation, but too often we fail to notice. You come to us day by day Yet we close the doors of our hearts when it seems convenient to do things our own way. We ignore your presence and your leadership. We have failed to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Forgive us, merciful Lord. May we live so that the world will know that you have come. Amen. Through John the Baptizer, we hear the Lord's promise. Turn away from your sins, and God will forgive your sins. Lift up your head, you mighty gate, before the King of glory waits. The King of Eternal God, ruler of all ages, graciously you come to us in order that we might come to you through the merit of Jesus Christ, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. 
Help us and all your children to respond to the call of your gospel with faith, love, and hope. God of faith, you created humanity to serve and praise you. And even when we rebelled against you, you promised to send a savior to redeem us from our sins. Strengthen our faith in your saving work through Christ. As you chose the people of Israel to hear the promise of redemption through the prophets, may people today believe in your good will for all that you have made. God of love, you fulfilled your promise of a redeemer in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant us the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we may share your love with the sick and the afflicted, with the poor and the homeless, with the victims of injustice and discrimination, and with all who are experiencing times of trouble. God of hope, you comfort us through our Savior's promise to return in glory at the end of time. As we await the coming of the Prince of Peace, let us not despair. We long for you to inspire all the nations and peoples of the world to turn to cooperation and nurture rather than to hatred and destruction. God of faith, love, and hope, to you and to you alone we pray. For you are our God, the only God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, you have kept the promise you made to our ancestors and have come to the help of your servant people. You remembered to show mercy to Abraham and Sarah and to all their descendants forever. We praise you, Lord. You are enthroned in glory, yet you came and continue to come for all who will receive you. We praise you, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. To you be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen.
As we prepare our hearts for a moment of prayer, let me mention that those of you who are on our emailing list should have received congregation-specific prayer concerns in the e by email yesterday, and we would encourage you to remember those individuals in your prayers. If you, there are folks that you would like to have added to that prayer list with their permission, you may contact the church office by phone or by email, and those will be added as well. Let us now take a moment and quiet our hearts for prayer. Gracious God, we come to you now in the name of Jesus in this season of Advent, this season of anticipation and yearning and longing. And oh Lord, how we long, how we yearn for an end to this pandemic. Lord, within our congregations, there are those who have themselves contracted this virus and we pray that you would bring healing and health and restoration. There are others that are vulnerable at risk for many reasons, perhaps some in quarantine having contacted those who've been exposed or others who are in uh, job situations that put them at risk, or perhaps others that are caring for family members who have contracted the virus. Oh God, we pray for health and healing and wholeness and protection. Come by our side. Lord, there are so many other needs in the world that surround us now, and Lord, there are many needs as well weighing on our hearts. Lord, hear us now as we would name before you in silence the people who we would especially invite your care, your hand upon at this time. Lord, in all these things, we place our faith, our hope, our confidence in you, and we pray these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture today comes from Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 3 and 7 through 9. Oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down, how the mountains would quake in your presence, as fire causes wood to burn and water to boil. Your coming would make the nations tremble. Then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds among our highest expectations, and oh, how the mountains quaked. 
yet no one calls on your name or pleads with you for mercy. Therefore you have turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. And yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We all are formed by your hand. Don't be angry with us, Lord. Please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we are all your people. Our second scripture comes from the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 24 through 27. But in those days after suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. They will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. Thus ends our scripture reading today. We come now to that time in the service where we would typically offer our tithes and gifts and offerings to the Lord. Uh, giving during these times is quite different than what we're accustomed to, and there will be information on how to give during the offering response that follows. But for now, even as we have uh, just a few days ago celebrated, perhaps in a very unusual way, the Thanksgiving holiday, holiday let us take a moment now with gratitude in our hearts to come before the Lord in prayer. Lord, in spite of the many adversities that challenge us, Lord, you are with us. We have been blessed and there is much to give thanks for. Lord, sometimes it is in the midst of adversity that our words of thanksgiving, that our gifts of gratitude express the deepest and most important messages that we can send to you. It is then that they express more fully than ever our faith and confidence in you. And so we pray, Lord, that you would hear our words of thanks, see the gratitude in our hearts. And Lord, we pray that your blessing would be upon the gifts that have been given this last week, the gifts that we are preparing to give now and the gifts that we will soon give. May you bless them, may you use them for the furtherance of your kingdom. We ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we come into your presence on this first Sunday of Advent, we yearn for you. Draw near to each one of us, offering us that which we most need from you. We ask and pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. So this has been a very difficult week for all of those involved in leadership in our three congregations. This last week, each of our joint boards meeting independently have reached the conclusions that it is necessary to suspend in-person worship once again, and what's more, to cancel plans for in-person Christmas Eve services in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Now, I realize for some of you, this is not a big deal. You've been worshiping online all along, and, uh, and we blessed you in that and encouraged that. In fact, some in our leadership are worshiping online while others have been worshiping in person and all of that's fine. If you're worshiping online, you're probably planning on worshiping online on Christmas Eve as well. So, you know, this is not a big deal for you. But let me assure you, there are many others um, that this com for whom this comes as a blow. It wasn't a decision that was made lightly. 
back in August, we first raised the question and began talking about what if this pandemic isn't over by December? What about Christmas Eve? Now, none of us even wanted to think about the idea that the pandemic wouldn't be over by this time, but we knew we needed to face the question. And uh, in each congregation, adamantly, there were strong voices saying, we need to find a way to worship together on Christmas Eve. We need to offer that. We need to find a way to do it as safely as we can, but we need to do it. And so for over three months, there have been groups in each congregation uh, involved in exhaustive planning for ways to do, to meet together on Christmas Eve as safely as possible. It wouldn't be the same as a regular Christmas Eve, but at least we would be together. And I would guess probably over two dozen people were involved in the, those efforts, putting forth great time and energy to make it happen. But the conditions have continued to de deteriorate. Finally, after this last weekend, so many things have happened. We have members within our congregations who've contracted the virus, others in self-quarantine. Within the larger communities around us, there have been folks who have lost their lives to the coronavirus, some of them young and some of them well-known by many of our members. By the grace of God, to our knowledge, no one has gotten infected in our congregations to, due to the safety measures in place and the grace of God, but um, we have learned that there have been people that have gotten the virus in our area from attending church services. And that's a sobering point and something that is, would be many of our greatest fears. And indeed, so many factors, hearing the, the governor and the county officials urging against gatherings that bring people together from other locations and all these things. And each of our jo joint boards came to the conclusion that in spite of all of our best efforts, the wise and prudent and faithful thing to do for us, at least as best we could understand it, would be to suspend in-person worship and cancel Christmas Eve planning. Now, the, those decisions weren't unanimous. Uh, and after they were made, there were many on all sides that just had tears. It was, it was very painful. But everyone, I felt, was able to speak honestly. We were able to come together, nobody feeling very good about the decisions, but respecting and listening to one another in ways that were just exemplary. And at the end of the day, each of the congregations reached that same conclusion. And, and so here we are. And I know there are many amongst us that are, are hurting. It's not easy. And add that, you know, I mean, it's not just Christmas Eve, right? It's like, it's another thing that coronavirus has taken from us. This, you know, there are so many losses all around from this pandemic, and it's just one more thing. And there's a, it's a deeper sense of loss, and this is just a, another way that, that, that it's coming before us, and we're re-experiencing the pain and grief of loss from this season of coronavirus. And so here we find ourselves on the first Sunday of Advent. And how do we connect those feelings of loss with Advent? And for some of us, that may seem like a real disconnect. I know I get that. I know my earliest understandings of Advent were formed when I was a kid and we were growing up and my grandparents would give each of us every year an Advent calendar. Do you ever, you know what I'm talking about by these Advent calendars? It was like a cardboard thing and there were little doors and there was one door for each day leading up to Advent. And as a child, you had to show a lot of patience and restraint because you could only open one door a day. But uh, you would open the door for your given day and behind it would be an image that would remind you something about Christmas that would help build anticipation. Maybe it'd be a picture of a candy cane, or maybe it would be Christmas cookies, or maybe it would be drums, you know, Christmas music or angels or other things. And all of it, the Advent can calendar was all oriented to build up your excitement. And so for me, at least growing up, Advent kind of meant pre-Christmas. The whole point of Advent was getting, building up the excitement that would culminate on Christmas Day. 
And for many of us, that's what Advent means. I, I know in every congregation I'm in, there's always every year the conversation about, why aren't we singing Christmas carols? It's the Christmas season. And, you know, the more liturgically minded folks say, no, you got to wait. You know, you don't sing Christmas carols in Advent. But it's always a topic because for so many of us, Advent is synonymous with pre-Christmas. Well, if that's what Advent is, if it's just pre-Christmas, well, then we're going to feel a total disconnect this year because coronavirus, Christmas 2020 is not going to be what we want it to be. And we're grieving the fact. I know there are some of you, this is your favorite time of year. You look forward all year to the opportunity to, to decorate your home and invite friends and guests over to celebrate the holiday. And this year, you can't do that. You look forward to finding that special gift and being there and to watch your, your loved one open it and the smile on their face. And this year, it's not going to happen like that. Or you look forward to that great family gathering, the high point of the year, and you're cooking and baking and everything is just right. And it's going to be building memories for a lifetime. And it's your, just, your favorite time of the year, your favorite day of the year. And this year, coronavirus has stolen that from you, and no, Zoom isn't a substitute. And you are grieving. And if Advent is just pre-Christmas, if Advent is counting down to that, who needs it? Right. It just is stirring the wound if Advent is just pre-Christmas. We, we already heard enough. We don't need to be reminded of that anymore. But what if Advent is much more than pre-Christmas? What if there's more to Advent than that? And I would suggest there is. In fact, I would suggest that maybe this year, better than any year past, is a year that we may come to the place where we can more fully appreciate what Advent really is all about. Why? What do I mean by that? Well, I guess I would summarize it this way by saying, Advent begins in darkness. Advent begins in darkness. Now, that's quite literally true. I mean, if you look around you, that the, we are at that time of year when the days are getting shorter, the nights are getting longer. Um, it is a time of darkness. And so it may seem like a strange time to start the church year. There is a deeper wisdom there, but we may not see that if we think Advent is just pre-Christmas. But actually the place that Advent, the season of Advent begins is really with a place of loss, of pain, of longing. The Old Testament scriptures uh, that surround Advent, you, oftentimes you don't really pay much attention to them, but typically begin in a very dark place. Here, from our reading from Isaiah 64, it begins with these words, a prayer and desperation to God, oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down. And please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we are all your people. It's a desperate plea to a God who seems absent. It's actually a prayer from the people in exile. It's a prayer from a dark place. And that's where the scriptures begin in Advent. If you had to think of a poster child hymn for the season of Advent, it's the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, a beloved hymn. But have you ever really paid attention to the words of that hymn? It is actually a prayer it's a prayer of yearning to God. Here's the first verse. Think about this. Picture this. O come, O come, Emmanuel. In other words, O come, God be with us. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. It's a hymn that begins with a people held in captivity. Do you feel like you're being held captive by this virus? A people held in captivity who are mourning, who are in sorrow and feeling in exile, disconnected. Can you identify with those feelings? 
that him will go on later to speak these words. Oh, come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Do you feel like you can sense those gloomy clouds? Do you feel as the, the author does of that hymn, death's dark shadows surrounding you? Do you yearn for the dawn of the day spring of our savior to cast aside those shadows? If you can sense that longing, that's where Advent begins because Advent begins in the darkness. Sisters and brothers, the season of Advent actually blesses, if I can use the word, sanctions the feelings that many of us are feeling now. If you are feeling overwhelmed by this virus, if you are so tired of it, if you're, you've been praying for this thing to end and God seems silent, if you are grieving, losing this holiday to COVID, if you are in that place of pain, Advent gives voice to that pain. Advent, in a sense, says it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to feel that loss. That's the beginning point. That's the starting point of the season of Advent. It's the season that gives voice to the captives longing for freedom, for the grieving who long to be comforted, for those in darkness who long to see the light. Advent is the season where their voices unite in appeal to God, God come and rescue and save us. Advent begins in the darkness. Advent is here for those of us who feel, who can sense that, that yearning for light and hope. Now, of course, Advent begins in the darkness, but it doesn't end there. We know even now surrounding us, there are reports, there are vaccines on the way. And while tomorrow, the future in store may not be quite like the past, we may never get totally back to the way things were. We know that we're gonna get to a much better place than we are today. There is hope and it is coming. We're not sure exactly when, but it's coming. And that's a metaphor too for our journey of faith. God may seem silent, but God is not absent. God is even now at work bringing deliverance. There is hope, the dawn is coming, and I'm speaking far beyond coronavirus. There is hope for this world, and it's that hope that is at the heart of Advent. Advent begins in the darkness, but it doesn't end there. But sisters and brothers, if in this moment we find ourselves feeling the disappointment and grieving the losses, that's natural, that's normal, that's an okay place to be, and it's okay to voice those feelings to God. That's the starting point of Advent. Let us pray. Lord, as we come to you now, many of us are feeling a sense of loss. There's so much that we are accustomed to celebrating at Christmas that now we must forego this year and it leaves an ache, it leaves a hole. Indeed, there are many who are suffering losses that go far beyond simply the celebration of a holiday. The pandemic has brought so much loss even on top of the, the losses we experience as a part of everyday life. Lord, there are many here who may feel like they're in a lonely place Yet, Lord, we give you thanks that in Advent, we find a place where those feelings too belong. We are not lost. We find ourselves even in those moments in your larger story. Comfort us, console us, draw near to us, lead us to hope as we hold to the assurance that though this season may begin in the darkness, it will lead to the light. Amen.
Let us pray together. O come, thou dayspring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. O come, O come to us, Emmanuel. Amen. Go in peace.